this lawfulness. And I just wanted to say a couple of things about the glass. So the glass that's in there, uh, in Frank's capstone, is a piece of glass I found back in 1990. I went to Switzerland to the Gertianum and I spent four years there uh, as a eurythmist uh, doing my eurythmy training. After the first year, uh, I was living in House Julian, which is a student house there. Thirteen different students from all the different trainings there. Uh, sculpture trainings, painting trainings, uh, speech trainings, uh, agricultural trainings. It was all going on in Dornock back then. Um, in House Julian, one of the residents there, is, uh, there was a gentleman there by the name of Han, Hans Jörg Palm. And Hans Jörg worked with uh, John Wilkes. And together, uh, they developed the seven-fold uh, flow form that you probably some of you are familiar with. So Hans Jörg worked uh, with him on that. And so he got the bid at the Gertianum to do all the landscaping and all the metamorphic uh, landscaping that's around it. Up the first year that I was there, a big construction project uh, started up and on the north side of the Gertianum, and actually that picture that was up there earlier, those first couple of pictures in the beginning of Frank's slideshow, I don't know if you can bring it up, Frank, or not, if it's possible, but uh, the one where you showed it where it burned. Oh, yes, I can get it right real quick. Well, um, the Gertianum has a lot of stuff over all the years that it's been doing plays and dramas and and a, a lot of that stuff is from the theater and they need a place for it. So they wanted to keep it on site. Right, so you see there, uh, we're looking there on a, a basically a north, e uh, a e northeast um, side of the building. And so what happened is they dynamited that whole building and then they took bulldozers and pushed it all over off onto this north side, which is sort of facing us. And then they added fill dirt so that when I was there in 1990 and they dug this huge crater out on the back side of the Gertiano there, uh, they noticed there was this black line going all the way along the hole. And the hole was huge. I mean, it was probably 60 feet by 20 feet deep by another 60 feet. It was, it was a very large hole. Um, it was in the winter, so it was really rainy. And so, the Gertianum allowed a handful of people from the natural science section uh, to go down into that hole and, and excavate those, that black uh, line, which is basically the ashes from the first Gertianum, of course. Uh, it was great because since I knew Hans Jörg, who's my roommate, I got to go along with him. So I got to be one of the few people who got to go down there and pick through all this. Something to know is that before the Gertianum was ever there, uh, a really important battle happened on top of that hill. Uh, there's a road that goes alongside there. It's called Hügelweg, which means hill way. But it used to be called Bluthügelweg, which means blood hill way. Because that whole hill where the Gertianum is standing is where a huge battle was waged and thousands of people died. Uh, one of the bloodiest battles to, uh, for the Swiss to have their independence. So it's, it's pretty amazing. There's this temple that was, you know, that was built on top of this battlefield to sort of transform it. So here we were out back there digging through, who knows, maybe there would have been bones back there or armor or who knows, you know, we were thinking all kinds of great stuff, but we were digging at that black line there. And so we pulled out a lot of stuff. Um, I had a whole, you know, a, a lot of stuff. Uh, shingles, uh, slate shingles, nails, screws, red, uh, no red glass I found. It's this piece of green glass, but if you go up there uh, later and you look at it, you can see it still has the carvings on it. It didn't melt and glob up like a lot of glass that people found. This one's still intact. You can see it etched. You can still see the, the, yeah, the, uh, the work that's on there. Um, I found some blue glass, but that was lo the larger piece. There was another piece that was on it that broke off. Um, and just, uh, yeah, anyway, it's a, it's a remarkable uh, experience to be able to dig it in there. I don't know, you know, it felt kind of weird, like you're in a grave in a way, but... Uh, 
And so uh, over the years, I've been giving away my pieces of glass and making little sculptures out of them. So that's my last piece of glass, and I, I wanted to give it to Frank so it would have a good home for it. And it was one of the few that were was still very uh, aesthetic in, in its, its, its outward appearance. So that's the story of the green glass. And also, uh, over here, if you wanted to learn more about the green glass or the, green, or the windows, um, the windows go through a path of initiation. And so described in all those motifs are, are the path that a human being can take in a lifetime in transforming the different parts of their being. And what's interesting about the green glass is that specifically Steiner speaks about the green glass as being uh, related to the will and to the forces of love. for love. It's a really beautiful exercise anyway. Thanks. Uh, the first thought that came to mind was the new faces that I see here. It, it's wonderful. It's just uh, uh, you don't know what your part is yet, but it'll be here. <laughs> believe me. And um, the whole thought of a new mystery center, of a new research center, uh, expanding on a very solid uh, foundation that Dr. Steiner gave us is, again, that's awesome too, is what builds on grows. Uh, as a little digression, I've been a musician for over 50 years and uh, playing a lot of guitar, writing songs, and all kinds of stuff. Uh, and just recently, I discovered uh, that there's another A besides A440. Does anybody ever play music? OK, there's a couple of people. Well, A is 440 hertz. 432 is as an A, which is what everything else is, is uh, 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 tuned from. So, here you have the 440, which is up, and it's a little, little tweaked, a little bit more materialistic, and not in any kind of harmony with life. Uh, 8 hertz is the hum of the earth, and 432 is resonant with that. 440 isn't. It only goes a certain way, and then it starts getting weird. Uh, 432 takes all the octaves and everything with it. So with this, uh, showed me, uh, this was like last week, I kind of discovered this. And so I retuned my guitar, and son of a gun, the thing stays in tune now. And I don't have, I, I, I shouldn't be allowed to sing, but I do it. <laughs> and, and now I, I'm not really struggling for the notes that are in between the notes that should be there. And, and, and it's something that was uh, a real paradigm shift for me as an individual. And so, uh, segueing into this work, uh, which is in harmony with the heart, with life, as Frank showed, with all the relationships of the forms and the chestahedron and so on, that uh, it's a growth in another paradigm. And, and in, 
integrated with that growth is the growth of the individual, right? So the more we focus on uh, truth and law, you know, in our own selves, in our own being, especially with the heart and that, and that, uh, that field of love, that universal field of love that the physicists can't, Einstein couldn't find it. He looked for a unified field. He couldn't find it. They can't find it today. They keep looking for a little tiny particle. No, they just get tinier. They don't know that yet. But the unified field is love. That's what is part of everything. Every living thing, and everything's living. Even the computers are living. And if we can imbue uh, everything that we do, every tool we use, every relationship we come into, just you name it, use your imagination. If you can, if we can imbue that with that unconditional love that lives in everybody right now, if, if, if you just open up that big chamber. So let it come in. That's what this is all about. It's not about uh, clever meditation chambers or you know, uh, uh, cute designs you can use or you know, beautiful sculptures that we uh, can render. I mean, those are, 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 the, are the, uh, the products because we're in the third dimension. You know, what are you going to do? You got to use the third dimension. It's here. It's not what we do, it's how we do it. It's not what we use, it's how we use it. And, and, and this is a, a pretty good start, I think, on the world. So that's all for me. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Frank and Dean and Thaddeus. Um, there are people here who know nothing about the Foundation Stone and Rudolf Steiner uh, that are here this evening. So afterwards, please ask questions and talk with us. We'll have conversation when we eat our cake and celebrate. And there are a lot of books and uh, reference material over there with beautiful pictures. In fact, everything here, almost everything, can be seen in photograph in black and white or color over there on the table. The 100th anniversary is such a big deal, I hardly have the words to articulate what occurred 100 years ago and what Rudolf Steiner did. He was out to change the earth and civilization and bring to modern man a way to do that. A way to find one's self, one's higher being, one's true self. Temple architecture was developed to help the human being come into themselves and find this inner being. Uh, we look out onto nature, and particularly in olden times, and the architecture served that purpose to bring the human being back into themselves. Rudolf Steiner designed a building that had untold uh, experiences that could happen inside this building. It wasn't even completely completed yet. Things were going on in the first Gertianum, but it's because they didn't have room to do them in other places. But it was near completion. Um, one could experience oneself. Whether one believed in what was going on or what he was all about or what he was there to do, if one was open, one could go there and have experiences. The Gertianum, the Gertianum burnt down, and a year later, Rudolf Steiner 
uh, had what is referred to as the Christmas Conference. And during this Christmas Conference, he brought to humanity the Foundation Stone Mantra. This mantra was to be laid in the soil of the human heart. And this, for those of you that don't know anything about this, um, please, I encourage you to look into what that means and what that is. Your whole life can be spent uh, uh, trying to uncover the invisible uh, within yourself that is, that is there. I'm going to read a few verses that Rudolf Steiner wrote. And uh, to honor this, uh, this 100th anniversary. Why does the seeking soul of man strive towards knowledge of higher worlds? Because every look born of the soul into the outer world of nature turns to the question fraught with longing, where is the being divine? So today, so many people's gaze is into machines. And now we are on the cusp of a new time for us as human beings, because now the chest is here, the heart geometry that wasn't here before. What is it that's happening in our civilization to the human being? What is happening in the human being's human heart? A fifth chamber is being discovered. The, without Rudolf Steiner paving the way, this would not be here. Frank could not have come to what he came to and receive the help that he received, visible and invisible, to discover what he discovered. This new building that Frank has uh, designed a capstone for and has unveiled for us today on the 100th anniversary of the foundation stone at the Gertianum, we hope to see hung in our lifetime. And the reversals and the inversions that Frank understands, like no one else that I know of anywhere on the earth today, and uh, this thinking can be applied to our own lives every day in everything that we do. But can you imagine living or being in one of these heart buildings? What great potential potential is there. So thank you, Frank. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I'm going to close with two more verses. And uh, they're saying the same thing in the most beautiful ways. And it will end with a reversal. In the human heart, there lives a part of man which contains matter more spiritual than in any other organ also a part of man of which the spiritual life is made more manifest in matter than that of any other organ. Hence, in the microcosm that is man, sun is the heart. And in his heart is man united, most of all with the deepest fount, the fount of his true being. And then Rudolf Steiner went on to give us another, another verse. More radiant than the sun, purer than the snow, finer than the ether, is the self, the spirit in my heart. This self am I. I am this self. Thank you, Rudolf Steiner. Thank you, Frank Chester. Thank you, everyone, for coming. And now it's time to celebrate and have a wonderful conversation. Thank you. Thank you.